Florida Gators ready to go. It's a brand new day and a brand new era of Gator football here at the Swamp. Florida not ready to underestimate the Pirates who are poised to pillage here at the Swamp. Folks, you're watching the SEC on ESPN under the lights here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. It's East Carolina taking on Florida. Both teams looking to improve to 2-0 on the season. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. Quint Kessenick down on the sidelines. He'll be joining us in just a moment. Well, there is a brand new day. There's a brand new era here in Gainesville under a new head coach, offensive guru, Jim McElwain, mm -hmm. who had a 61-point explosion in his first win as a Gator head coach. But the prevailing storyline, Rod, is about the quarterbacking situation. They've got two. They don't have one yet. Well, they've seen thrown passes here, which they hadn't seen in a while. <laughs> two quarterbacks. they got to pick one at some point, right? Not yet. Well, both of them do things well. How about Will Greer? Great anticipation, great accuracy, and the arrogance to make a throw like this into a very small window. He's a pocket passer. Harris, on the other hand, great at extending plays. He's a mobile guy, but he always isn't thinking about running. Watch the eyes down the field. He finds Kelvin Taylor, lets him have the ball to make plays. Those are two of the traits that they have that led them to this great week last week. They both had touchdown passes. They both were fantastic. So no decision yet, but they got to make one yeah. at some point. They combined for 29 completions last week as we go downstairs for more from Quinn Kessner. The Swamp will be without its most dangerous Gator tonight, Vernon Hargraves. First team All-American corner, punt returner, two-way player this year, injured in practice on Thursday. We're told it's a leg injury. He did come out earlier this evening to warm up. You see him fully dressed. He took a very light warm up. Florida officials told us, though, he will not play tonight. Quincy Wilson gets the start at corner. He's a 6'1 sophomore. More interesting, though, I think, Mark, Antonio Callaway will return punts tonight. He is a freshman. It's been raining all day. The football may be wet. Yeah, Callaway, a true freshman, so one of the storylines to watch as this game evolves tonight. Ruffin McNeil, the six-year head coach of East Carolina, the Pirates looking to get back to a bowl game. Remember, they played Florida real tough last year, finally losing 28 to 20 in the Birmingham Bowl less than a year ago, about nine months ago. And Jim McElwain, the former head coach at Colorado State, he coached a couple of championship quarterbacks as the offensive coordinator at Alabama for several years before taking that head job in Fort Collins and now on the sidelines here in Gainesville. Ready to go. East Carolina will receive. Three yards deep, it's Kay Johnson. And it'll come out to the 25-yard line, first down and 10 for their starting quarterback, Blake Kemp. Kemp last week was 29 of 37 passing. But those numbers a little bit deceptive as they primarily worked underneath a lot of nickel and dime stuff Rob. yeah and you know he's relatively inexperienced that was his first start at the collegiate level last week a uh, youngster out of junior college actually got the start because kurt binkert who was expected to be the starter got hurt in camp and so blake kemp takes over they're replacing shane cardin at quarterback from a season ago who was one of their all-time greats statistically first down and 10 from the 25. And a little receiver screen. There's that nickel and dime passing attack complete to Isaiah Jones, who's one of their primary targets. Picked up two, Quincy Wilson, who got the start at corner in place of Hargraves, making the stop on the play. Rod, what kind of tempo are we talking about here? Well, I think you'll see an upbeat tempo. They like to go fast. They ran 101 plays in that bowl game against Florida. Wow. I think they'd like to get somewhere around that in this ball game if they have the chance. Second and 13, the handoff to Hairston. Hairston gained 154 yards last week, had a career high rushing, along with four touchdowns brought down by Marcel Harris. Leaves them a third down coming up and about five to go. Gain of seven on the play by Hairston. One of the concerns coming out of last week was that East Carolina did not throw the ball down the field. Everything was short. 
And they're going to have to get the ball down the field today if they have any shot in this ball game. Quick slant complete for the first down, and number 81 makes the catch. That's Jimmy Williams out of Wilmot, Washington, North Carolina, picks up 12 in the first down. Well, you know, remember Quint mentioned on the sideline before the game that Hargraves is out. I, I would test corners mm. if you don't have the All-American out there. Hairston takes the handoff and ducks under one would-be tackler out to the 44-yard line. Got about a yard and a half on the play. Yeah, you, and you, Zalonely makes the stop. You expect Florida to play man-to-man -man defense even without Hargraves in there. And you figure you take some chances with Wilson more so than Tabor mm -hmm. since he's the new starter. Quick slant complete. And into the secondary, another first down, all the way down to the 36-yard line. That's Davon Grayson. Picks up 21 on the play, a missed tackle by Antonio Morrison. Yeah, Jonesy, this is the matchup we're talking about. You'll see to the right side, Wilson is locked up in single coverage, and he gets beat by Grayson that time. First and 15. Harrison on the handoff. Gets those shoulders north-south. Gains about four on the play. Ivy making the stop, one of the more physical guys up front. There's a look at Hairston's numbers from last week. Had four rushing touchdowns. Had a 45-yard draw play on the opening series and punched in and against Towson. He's a tough inside runner, about six feet tall, 205 pounds. Good balance. Second and 11. Little play fake. And another completion. Forward progress going to be marked at about the... 31-yard line. And leave them with about a third and five coming up. Tabor making the stop on Brandon Bishop. Picks up six. Kemp has been accurate on those short timing passes. Part of this offense. Known for that. But it does set up plays down the field if you can actually throw them. But remember, man-to-man -man coverage. They'll be jumping all over those short routes. From there would be about a 48-yard field goal. Taking a shot up top. Coverage caught. Touchdown, Pirates. Grayson with a great catch working against Wilson. And they may have found their matchup, Rod, like you alluded to. Well, it's a thing that you normally think about. Who's the new guy on the block? Who's the new kid? Wilson is the starter in place of Hargraves. And they went after him on two of those three passes, including that touchdown pass. Had him locked up in man-to-man -man coverage and beat him on the deep fade route. We were wondering just a short three minutes ago whether the Pirates would be able to throw the ball up top and peel the top off that defense. They certainly did here. That's the first touchdown pass for Blake. Kemp. Boy, they twisted Florida's cap early here. We'll be back after this. Caleb Pratt kicking off for the Pirates. Brandon Powell back deep. Remember, Powell, as Quint Kessenick reported, replacing Vernon Hargraves the third, who's out with a leg injury. And Powell brought down, pardon me, Powell, the receiver. Brought down at the 17. And now we get a look at Will Greer. Making his first collegiate start, a 6'2 redshirt freshman out of Davidson, North Carolina. 15 of 17 last week against New Mexico State for 164 yards. The National High School Player of the Year a couple of years ago and came in, got his weight up, got stronger during his redshirt year, went from 172 to 215 and ready to sling it right now. In a year? Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of lifting. <laughs> that's what you do in your retro year, right? He yeah. hand it off to Taylor. Pardon me, that's Jordan Cronkright, the true freshman from Miami. Picks up 11 on the play. It'll be second and 14. Pardon me, second and four. Because let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, for East Carolina, Harrison, we see him at running back. Four touchdowns last week. Jones, a good receiver. Taylor, the workhorse for Florida, and Brandon Powell is one of those guys that could become the explosive wide receiver that McElwain is looking for in this Gator offense. A.K.A. Pocket Rocket to most of his teammates. 
If he and Scarlett will get some touches today in the backfield. Here's Cronkite again, and he was met. But he moved the pile just enough to get that first down. Picked up five on the play. Ruffin McNeil in his sixth year on the sidelines. Former linebacker played for Pat Dye at East Carolina. And as a head coach, he has had a good measure of success against the Power Five schools. Yeah, you see, he got Virginia Tech last year after having lost to them in 2013. So he knows all about revenge mm. and payback. First down and 10 for Florida. Clear to pass. And it's caught. Wow, what an effort by Brandon Powell. Lined up in the backfield and made a great grab. That's your impact player, the little pocket rocket. And how about that throw by Greer? That's the wheel route you mentioned. Coming out of the backfield, he got matched up in a mismatch against Joe Alley, who's about a 230-pound outside linebacker, and it's tough enough for a corner to stay with the pocket rocket. The <laughs> linebacker has no chance. Nice catch on his birthday. 26-yard game, first down and 10. And that is Taylor back in the ball game now. Kelvin Taylor picks up three, of course, the son of Fred Taylor, former great here at Florida. Yeah, you, you mentioned the talent that's coming into Florida from the Miami area. That makes me think of Randy Shannon, who is one of the defensive coaches on this staff in Florida, who was the head coach at yep. Miami and has all those great high school connections down there. Down there in Dade County and Broward County, Palm Beach County, he can lock it down on his own. Some of the great programs, Carroll City, Booker T. Washington, Miami Central, so it's third and goal from the 20. Empty formation here. Five receivers, Greer with time. Now he's going to take off, and it's tripped up. He put it on the ground. It's loose. Still no signal who recovered the ball. And it's going to stay Florida ball, but it's fourth down. Joe Aaliyah was the one that tripped him up. Good hustle by the Pirates defense. Let's take another look at the penalty. I think we have it here. Yeah, take a look right here. Keep your eyes right there and watch what happens. As Jake McGee. He is pushing off well into the inside the five while the ball is in the air. It didn't impact the play, but nevertheless, it was spotted and the flag is tossed. Austin Harden from 37 yards out. Now a perfect three of three on the season. What looked like six is only three. The Pirates with the lead when we come back to the Swamp. Gainesville, Florida, a.k.a. the Swamp, on the campus of the University of Florida. Mark Jones, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick. 7-3 ball game, East Carolina, with an impressive opening drive and uh, limiting the Gators to just a field goal there, Rod. Yeah, and we already had an epic tantrum on the sideline by <laughs> McElwain. Pretty good start. Yes. Florida going to kick off here. Both teams coming into this game 1-0. and Florida scoring 61 points and win over New Mexico State last week. And East Carolina defeating Towson. And this is going to come out to the 25-yard line where it will be first down and 10. And Kemp taking the snap right now. Hands it off to Hairston with nowhere to go, reversing his field and tripped up at the 27 yard line nice shoestring tackle made by marcus may limiting that game to two may back in the lineup after having been suspended for the opener part of uh jim McElwain's attempt to instill some much needed discipline to this program he says and they had only one penalty last week he had a couple players suspended but they're back now preaching the eight keys to success to his players Hairston this time over the left side sets up a third and about three to go. You think players can remember eight keys? That's a lot, man. I'd keep it at two or three. I, I can handle two. <laughs> you give me a couple keys, I'm all right with that. Yeah, his point was he wants his guys to be able to critically think, evaluate themselves, and have some sustainability beyond football. Great chance for success. Third and three. 
Hairston stopped up shorter first down. Great tackle on that fill. Not a fan of that call. I mean, I understand this offensive line is a veteran line that's played against this team, but third and three to line up and run at this defense, which is one of the best defenses in the in the country. I don't know. I, I'd prefer to see him throw that ball in that situation. Yeah, great stop by Brian. That's the second consecutive three and out for the Pirates offensively. Gregory punting to that man, Antonio Callaway. Callaway, the true freshman out of Miami, Booker T. Washington High School, replacing Vernon Hargraves, the third, who's out if you're just joining us. He suffered a leg injury on Thursday and will not play today. So reported Quint Kessenick earlier. Jordan Scarlett making his first appearance in the backfield for Florida. Number 25. Career given time. Has a man complete and into pirate territory to DeAndre Goolsby down to the 40. Well, I don't know how many times you got to see this war rock before you figure out. They're actually going to keep throwing it. We saw it earlier. They used a different player, Powell, in the backfield. This time they used Goolsby, the tight end. Last week they used it with McGee and with Goolsby. 34-yard gain on the play. It's on film. You got to know, yeah. right? Well, uh, it's a new day and age here under Jim McElwain. Last year, the Gator tight ends didn't catch a lot of passes. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. They run it. And the true freshman, Jordan Scarlett, stopped up. And they're going to say it's a fumble. One official is saying it's coming back to East Carolina. The other one is saying it was whistled down. So we have a little bit of disagreement well, amongst the, the officials. If the whistle blew, the play was dead. Ruling on the field as the runner's progress will stop prior to the fumble. Yeah. Second down. And it's not even reviewable at that place. When the, when, when the whistle blows, that's it. Scarlett, the true freshman. Well, you see, <laughs> he's being instructed, yeah. hey, cover that ball yeah. up. Nothing is more, more <laughs> important than that. Jordan Scarlett on the sidelines now and you fumble my football and we saw footballs around the football offices on springs coming out of the walls in the football offices literally folks we're not joking this is Cronkite the true freshman getting back to that rod the idea being with all the footballs planted in the different meeting rooms it's, a, it's an opportunity I'm guessing for them to yeah yeah. Practice holding well, on to it. I would just have him watch Remember the Titans. And Denzel Washington <laughs> saying, if you fumble my football, you will run a mile. So that's just not yeah. Hollywood thing. Right. <laughs> okay. You will run a mile. Six-yard gain on that last play. Scarlett ran for 34 yards last week. Taylor in the ball game now in the backfield. Tight end in motion. Greer on a little bootleg action wide open. Goolsby again makes a great move. Touchdown, Gators! Quick scores for Florida. Field goal and now a touchdown. And they've got a 9 7 lead. Goolsby's first touchdown catch this season. And the first of his career, the extra point, barely inside that left upright, but good. And things feeling a little bit more normal here at the swamp. A tight ends returning to the offensive repertoire. Goolsby, six. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN College Football Primetime. The Gators taking the lead 10 to 7 with 10 unanswered points. And the Swamp rocking once again. A sellout crowd of right around 90,000 on hand. John 
Johnson. And Grayson back deep for the Pirates. And this one squibbed down to the two. This is Johnson. Trying to find an alley and out to the 25. Harrison stopped up at the 25 yard line. What was the key on this last touchdown pass? Well, the, the real key is Greer. He does an excellent job of faking with the football and then waiting for Goolsby on the shallow cross to come all the way across the field and then simply some great running using his blockers to get into the end zone. They've had some talented, talented tight ends at the University of Florida through the years. Let's see how the Pirates answer here. Pass complete forward progress going to be at the 30 yard line. We're still working on Quincy Williams, a five yard gain by Grayson. And, uh, working on the helmet of Hairston there. That's your number one tailback, man. You got to get him out of the shop and back on the field. End of the first quarter in the books. Back after this. Back for the start of the second quarter here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville. The home crew leading by three. East Carolina looking at third down. And about five to go for the first down. Blake Kemp, the starting quarterback from the beginning here. They're showing pressure. Empty formation, five receivers. Has time and finds his man over the middle out to the 40-yard line. Complete to Bryce Williams, a 10-yard gain, and they move the sticks downstairs to Quint. Jonesy, Bryce Williams is their where's Waldo. He'll line up <laughs> as an H, as a tight end, as a fullback. They'll even split him out. 6'6 transfer from Marshall. He's a go-to guy on third and short, and a big-time player that ECU's got to find ways to get him the ball. They can't miss him with those flowing locks out the back of his helmet. A bounce pass incomplete intended for Barnes. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. You know, Quinn's point is a good one. The two guys we expected to see East Carolina use in the passing attack are Bryce Williams and Isaiah Jones. Jones has been missing in action so far, and Bryce Williams was until that last catch. Second and 10. Handed off with nowhere to go to Anthony Scott, who got his first touch of the ball game in the backfield. Playing behind Hairston, the starter. Loss of two on the play. And a long third down coming up now from the 38. Well, last third down, you did not see pressure, although they faked it from Florida. Keep your eye on number 23, Jeremy Powell. He's a linebacker, lines up in this type of situation as a pass rusher. Kemp going up top, but not even close. Into coverage at the 25-yard line, incomplete. It was intended for Jimmy Williams. So this Florida defense winning that time. Is it time? Well, there's a backup quarterback, or for today, the backup quarterback, Treon Harris, who started last week. Got the first three series. And doesn't have the helmet on, so he's, yeah. he's not looking like a guy who plans to come in this next series. And Greer's already had, what, 15 yeah. plays? And Harris, uh, 32 and 3 at Booker T High School in Miami last couple years ago. On the return, this is Antonio Callaway at the 28 yard line. It looks like Will Greer is going to come out for his fourth series of the ball game. He's had, as you mentioned, there's going to be 15 snaps now, a 40 yard punt, six on the return. Will Greer. Four of five passing, 98 yards and a touchdown so far. You know, he was coached by his dad in high school, and his dad was a pretty good quarterback himself at East Carolina. He just had a pretty good quarterback ahead of him. Yeah. We're the seventh starter at the University of Florida, post Tim Tebow. First goes off, just like Cron Kreit. With a first down out to midfield at the 50-yard line. Nice run between the tackles there. The 18 yard gain for the true freshman.
Florida got off to a little bit of a shaky start, especially defensively. Florida struggling here, so it's a week-to-week -week thing. I don't think you can have these great pronouncements after one. You know, week. my boy Charles Barkley is going to come after me and you now because you just said that about Auburn. That's true. Have lost. It's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice run here by Treon Harris. Finally, getting some solid footing, putting his foot in the ground and making a play. Picks up 15 yards and his best play so far since taking over the reins of the offense from Will Greer. Well, this is the added dimension you get from him. You have a mobile quarterback who can make plays with his feet. He can extend plays. He can run the zone read. He can run the quarterback power. That's something that they don't get when they have Greer as the quarterback. First down and 10 with four minutes to go here in the first half. And off is the Cronkite. Another good run by him, brought down by Simmons. You know, Jim McElwain has talked about this quarterbacking situation with Greer and Harris. He says it is a true partnership. And there seems to be, at this point anyway, Rod, no divisiveness within the team. It's an interesting dynamic that, frankly, can go different ways sometimes. Well, I, I don't think it's going to be a partnership all season. Okay. I don't think McElwain can afford that. Jordan Scarlett in the backfield, and he takes this handoff. Picks up about three. What do you mean by how, how long do you figure McIlwain can keep this two-quarterback system going? This team has issues other than quarterback. That, that offensive line needs work. They're going to have to, they're going to play some young guys. They have a stretch coming up in the SEC that's going to be tough, a five-week stretch where they may struggle. Mm -hmm. They may lose four or five games in there, three, mm -hmm. something like that. And whatever, whoever the quarterback is, is going to get some heat. And if you're playing two, you're going to get some heat. So I, I think this two quarterback system, you got to make a decision at some point. McElwain trying to keep that external noise as mute as he can. Scarlett in the backfield. A quick out complete to Ahmad Fullwood. Who's knocked out of bounds right around the 20-yard line. Picked up eight on the play. They're going to spot it right at the 20. And Fullwood took a serious blow. Is uh, blinking. He might have had a contact lens jarred loose. Now remember, Jonesy, once you get inside the 20, the red zone, it is all about scoring touchdowns. And Florida has not been great with it the last few years. They haven't been great with it tonight. But you have to get touchdowns. There's Scarlett trying to do it. And Scarlett brought down at about the 17. Picked up three. It'll be third down and four coming up. And there's a look at their efficiency in the red zone last yeah, year. 59%. Now, the really good teams, they're 75% or better. Wow. And so when you're down around that, you, I mean, this is why you're losing. You can't give away touchdowns. You can't settle for field goals. You need touchdowns. Well, they got a third and four coming up. And 0 for 2 in the red zone, touchdown-wise today. Harris at quarterback. Pass complete to Powell with nowhere to go. And it's going to be fourth down coming up for Florida. Loss of one on the play on the completion to Brandon Powell. That play never really got going, and... Austin Harden will come in and uh, try and attempt the field goal. He missed his last one. Not a good sign for yeah. this offense. I and mean, they've struggled a lot more today than they did last week. Of course, they had pounds in the state, and yeah. we should have expected 60 points or so, 61. I mentioned Harden missed from 34 last time. This one coming from 35. He made one from 37 on his first attempt and he is now one for three today an early gift two of them actually for east carolina shades of last year he's got a little bit more interesting folks pass incomplete to bryce williams Clearly an incomplete pass. Second down. 
East Carolina with one timeout remaining. And you know, at this point, Jonesy, I'm, I'm not sure it's worth it for East Carolina. No. I, I think you probably, you take a knee, you get out of here, you're down 10-7. You've been struggling on first down, and that's the number one thing you have to figure out at halftime. How to generate something on first down so that you're no longer in a hole on second and third. They've run 12 first down plays, zero yardage. Doesn't sound like you can win football games that way. Kemp back to pass. And it's incomplete. With yeah. four seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, I, I, you know, take take the knee and go in at halftime. I mean, right now you're rolling the dice. You've got a chance for something bad to happen. Hmm. As aggressive as this Florida defense has been, they're coming after you. They're hitting folks like crazy. The ball's yeah. been on the ground two or three times, and they've been lucky that they haven't lost it every single time. Third and ten. Harrison picks up about five, and that'll do it for the first half of play. Florida down ten, up ten seven, as we head back to the studio for the Outback Steakhouse halftime report. Guys, the Pirates aren't just Gator baits. <laughs> Coach, what's been the big, biggest challenge you faced in the red zone? Well, big thing is we're hurting ourselves with penalties, and, and uh, you know, it's something we've been pretty good at. Um, but you know what? We haven't, we're not good enough right now to overcome, so we've got to make sure that we're playing right. And, and you know what? They're doing a heck of a job. After 30 minutes, which quarterback gives you the best chance to win this game in the second half? You know, we'll look at that when we get in there and talk about it and figure out what we're going to do. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the SEC on ESPN under the lights here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium Gainesville Florida aka the sticky and steamy <laughs> swamp right now the whole yeah, crew is. leading by just three Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Rod Gilmore Quinn Kessinick down in the field going to join us in just a bit the prevailing storyline Rod coming in the two quarterback situation for Florida what was your take on that in the first half well I sort of give them both a pass because they struggled offensively the offensive line couldn't really get much done they ran for 48 yards in the first half not good enough I think we're probably going to see more of Greer in the second half although the rotation says Harris would start but I think Greer probably gives them a better opportunity to throw the football considering that they're struggling running the football tonight at what point does Greer or Harris actually distinctively separate themselves what is when you say he separated himself from the other guy what, what will it look like what well it we, we haven't seen it tonight okay you know we, we've seen one touchdown drive by Greer we've seen a couple of drives by Harris uh, for field goals and miss field goals uh, things of that nature so the production we haven't seen and part of that is the East Carolina defense they've blitzed these guys they've shut down the rushing attack so it's been tougher Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Yeah, offensively, Ruffin McNeil told me they've been facing a six-man box all game long. Uh, they're going to have to run the ball, he said, and you expect to see more quarterback run with James Summers. But uh, six-man box, they're playing nickel. He said we got to take what they're giving us, and that means running the ball. Yeah, Quinn, you know, after that first series, East Carolina's offense just shut down. Well, they ran for 12 yards in the first half, and, you know, they don't have a running threat at quarterback when they have Kemp in there. And Summers, quite honestly, seemed to have struggled the moment was kind of big for him big yeah. crowd first opportunity to play quarterback Brendan Powell back deep for the Gators Powell the birthday boy will take a knee it'll come back down to the 25 yard line and it's going to be Will Greer it looks like taking the reins of this Florida offense. So once again, he will start here in the third. Florida was a pretty prohibitive favorite coming into this ball game against ECU. That pass incomplete and looks like it's intercepted. Caught on the fly off the bounce off of Bailey and East Carolina with the interception and great field position now. Yeah, you called it. That ball just bounced off of Bailey's chest as he hit the ground. Just watch here. He's trying to cradle it. That ball never hit the ground. He didn't have control over it. It's, it's underneath. It's on top of his hand as he hits the ground. 
and it bounced up. I, I don't I don't see that that ball ever hit the ground. I don't think it did. No. First and ten. Blake Kemp, the new quarterback. They've been rotating both he and James Summers tonight, but they've had no rhythm on first down, no success on first down. A little pressure off the edge. Kemp has a man open. Jones, touchdown, Pirates. East Carolina with a 13-10 lead after that touchdown catch for 27 yards by Isaiah Jones. Well, Jones was the guy we talked about that had to get hot, had to be included. And they finally got him involved, and they caught Florida bringing pressure, blitzing, and left Jones all alone. That's the 11th touchdown catch of his career. And the Pirates now lead 14-10. Jones starting to play a bigger role here. And a huge catch for the Pirates. And they got the home team down and reeling a little bit when we come back to the swamp. Well, East Carolina with the lead. Some folks from East Carolina making the trip here to Gainesville, Florida. And why not? Their team leading by four points right now after that touchdown reception by Isaiah Jones. Isaiah's dad, Rob, played at East Carolina back in the day. His uncle is Jeff Blake, brother in the NFL, has a brother at Arizona as well. This is Brandon Powell on the kickoff return. Has an alley. Got some speed. And a nice tackle at the 42-yard line. Will Greer in at quarterback. Little receiver screen complete to Robinson. Nice move. And Robinson is getting loose. Picks up about 15 yards for the first. Down. Right back here, Will Greer in a quarterback. Has had a decided edge in plays tonight over Treon Harris, the other half of that quarterbacking duo. First and 10. Taylor with the handoff. Nice seam. Picks up about eight. So, Rod, let me ask you at this juncture of the game, Greer with the inordinate amount of snaps you see them right there compared to is this a decision has a decision been rendered I right think now? so I, I think we have the starting quarterback now for Florida mm -hmm. the fact that Harris didn't start the third quarter when the rotation would dictate that and you look at the number of plays and the fact that they have to throw the ball I think that all says they are more comfortable with Greer second and two Greer completes it and there he is again Robinson Pulling that ball loosely. Picked up 16. No flag there on the sidelines. Yeah. He's kind of standing still right at the boundary. Now the fans were certainly calling for a flag. Robinson is the guy who is probably the most electrifying receiver they have. The guy who has the most experience as well. There you see the end of the play. Tackled no out of bounds. No, no call? No call. I, I think they felt like, you know, there was a lot of movement going on over there. I mean, I might have flagged him, but I understand why the officials didn't. A little trickery on the inside handoff. This is Powell. And Powell picked up about three. A little shy of the 15-yard line. Second down coming up. Yeah, Powell's been quiet as well. Again, East Carolina's done a good job of handling the rushing attack in the first half and that made it tougher for Florida to throw the football. It made them one dimensional essentially. There we see is Fred Taylor. Pardon me. I knew I was going to make that mistake at some point. Kelvin Taylor told us. What about Will Greer? Perhaps a little bit more vocal than Treon Harris directing traffic and completing this pass to the edge to Robinson. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like he got the first down and a flag thrown this time. Yeah. Dominique Lennon there. Came in a little bit late. Well, not only did he come in late, he came in with a forearm towards the head. Just watch the end of the play. Robinson's out of bounds. Now watch here. He's up high Following with the forearm the to the helmet. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds in the 31 defense. Half the distance it, it, to the it's, it's a combination of the hit out of bounds plus he goes up high. That's going to tack on a few more yards. Make it a first and goal now from inside the five. 
for the Florida Gators in the all orange uniforms, wearing these unis for the first time since 1989. Going memories of Emmett Smith, Cohen Bell. They did a great job at Jacksonville University. Cronkite in the backfield. Three tight ends, single back formation. Greer into the end zone, incomplete, and almost picked off. Oh, did he close. get away with one there? Trayvon Simmons rod almost picked that one off. Well, you could have picked out your number of white shirts that yeah. had a shot at that ball. I'm not sure what Greer saw here. I saw a lot of purple, a lot of white. Look at all those white jerseys. Ooh. He tries to squeeze that into the back of the end zone to McGee. We talked about the very beginning of the show. There's a little bit of arrogance because of his arm, his accuracy. He tries to squeeze the ball into places where a lot of folks would say, no, 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 no. That was an example of it. We're seeing what they've done in the red zone so far tonight. Not that efficient at all. They're going to hand it off. And Cronkite tripped over the seven-yard line marker. Man, they are feet tangled up. And Coach McElwain, yeah, literally scratching his head, trying to figure out what exactly the problem has been in the red zone tonight. Third he, goal. he told Quint that it was us, so that we're doing it to ourselves. They tripped themselves there. And then the, the previous down, the bad throw into the end zone, he's a little frustrated because you can't say East Carolina has hurt them down here. Yeah. They've given them opportunities. Florida hasn't taken advantage down here. Third and goal. Remember, they've already missed two field goals tonight, so you wonder how much trust Coach McElwain might have in his place kicker right now. The one guy they have is Robinson. He's been the guy on this drive. Taylor's in the backfield. Rear fires. Touchdown, Robinson. Extra point good, and Robinson, who was the central figure in a little bit of controversy this week when Coach told us he decided to take himself out of the starting lineup because of a decision he made, looks like he decided to get himself a touchdown here. What a great response by the Gators offensively after that East Carolina touchdown. Come back and score one right here, Rob. Yeah. That's the eighth Florida penalty tonight. Kemp on the move and throws it away. Yeah, you know, Jonesy, they can't keep doing this. They, they, they got to get something on first down, and, and they've abandoned the running game. They, they have to run the football a little bit. The pressure on the quarterback is huge. They're bringing, even with the four-man rush, they're at him. So they have to find a way to take some pressure off. You can't run the ball. You got to throw some screens. You got to do some draws. You got to do something here, or else that's going to cost them eventually. Second and ten. Hairston is to the right of quarterback Blake Kemp. Jones with nowhere to go and brought down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about four. And I, I don't, 35. I don't. I don't. That's get not that. the kind of run no, you had in mind. Right? If you can't run the football and you're getting pressure, the last thing you need to do is to run a reverse or something deep in your backfield. You're already getting penetration in your backfield. And now you got a third and long coming up. If I'm Florida, I don't back off. Third and 13. Picked off, and this could be a pick six. Touchdown, Tabor!
That secondary of the Gators, which was victimized frequently on the opening drive of the ball game by the Pirates offensively, has really flipped the script on the Pirates since then. Well, the pressure the front four has been putting on Blake Kemp, tremendous. You saw it there. He kind of threw blindly trying to get the ball out to Bryce Williams and Tabor with the kind of play we've come to expect from this secondary. Probably the best secondary in the country. When they get opportunities to make picks, they don't drop them. And the swamp has come alive. Kicking off from the 20 because of the penalty against Ivy. From the 10, this is Johnson. East Carolina feeling a little bit of pressure right now, and guys, pressure makes diamonds and pressure busts pipes. And still enough time to run the ball, right? I mean, plenty, yeah. And be even before the last touchdown. There's still time. Kemp out of the shotgun. Downfield incomplete. No flag. Intended for Bryce Williams. Williams, the big transfer from Marshall. And remember, Hargraves did not start on the corner for Florida tonight for more. Here's Quinn. Zero plays for Vernon Hargraves, but his impact has been huge on this sideline. Teammate, leader, challenging Quincy Wilson and the rest of that secondary, being positive with them. He's been up and down the sidelines all day. Cheerleader, assistant coach, really impressed with what he's brought to the table uh, as, a, as a basically a spectator. Uh, the consummate teammate. Wide open in the flat, complete. And pushed out of bounds just before the first down marker is Jimmy Williams. Picked up nine. It'll be third and short coming up for the Pirates. And uh, it's a team that likes to go quick, and we're, we're seeing them go a lot faster now than they did earlier, right, Rob? Yeah, well, a little bit of a sense of desperation. They've ratcheted it up again a bit. They need to pick up first down to stay on the field and to have an opportunity to get back in the game. Only one running play here in the second half, and here's the second. Hairston gets the first down and a couple more. Into Gator territory, the 45 picks up eight. Remember, Hairston had 185 yards rushing last week, four touchdowns, and has been a forgotten man tonight. First and ten. Empty formation, five receivers. Kent gets it off, incomplete. Really challenging those defensive backs. Quincy Wilson there again, working against Grayson. And since that opening drive, Wilson has really responded. I think he's had a really good night. You, you, you take away the touchdown pass when he, he was actually in good position in the first quarter on that, but got beat on the ball. But he's bounced back from that and has played really tough on the outside. Second and ten. Over the middle, the pass complete. Bryce Williams with the catch, still on his feet. Battling all the way down to the 31. Picked up 14 on the play. Mentioned Harrison earlier. He has 20 yards rushing on the night after 185 last week. They can certainly get him involved with throwing him the football, if not handing it to him. They hand it off to him this time. Fouls forward to the 26. Got about five on the play. Pirate offense with a little bit of rhythm here now. Good drive going, also helping their defense rest up on the sideline. Kemp trying to throw. Almost got loose and then brought down at the 28. And a flag thrown. A late one. Is that another celebration on sportsmanlike conduct? Following the play, personal foul, 69 offense, late hit. The down counts, 15 yard penalty, will be third down. Wow, well, they were in field goal range. Yeah, that's huge. Remember, this is a two possession game. 
they were in field goal range. Now you're out. So now you actually have to do something to try to get back in there, and that's a long way. You have a play that can get you back to around the 30-yard line to have a shot at a field goal. Thirty seconds to go in the third. Hairston open over the middle, slips and falls at the 39-yard line. Way short of the first down. Slippery field, of course. There's been heavy rain all throughout the day. They have no shot at a field goal from here. So he may go for it here, considering that, you know, if you try and punt from here, you might net, you know, 15, 20 yards because you're likely to kick right. it into the end zone. So I think they're going to take this break to talk about it. 45 minutes in the books here in Gainesville, Florida, where we might have seen today in week two of the college football season a little separation between Greer and Harris. Greer responding with a touchdown toss there. The Gators with the lead when we come back for the fourth. Back for the start of the fourth quarter, East Carolina punting. We try and drop this one inside the 10, but instead it bounces into the end zone on the 39-yard punt. Treon Harris back in at quarterback. Jordan Scarlett beside him in the backfield, the true freshman tailback. Pass was low. They're going to rule it incomplete. Intended for C.J. Wharton. It'll be second down. Let's go downstairs to Quint. Well, Treon took no warm-ups uh, in, in between the third and fourth quarter. He didn't throw at all. And you see how sluggish he looks. See, he's been kind of sedate here on the sideline uh, he's wound tight but he's just I haven't seen much energy from him but it's got to be tough coming cold off the bench yeah great point Quinn. yeah I wonder how much of that Quinn is due to the rotation being altered you know with Greer getting a lot more snaps than Harris did and off to Scarlett and Scarlett with a nice burst picks up the first down and a few more Got about 14 yards on that, right? I want to ask you this about Treon Harris. He's been sitting for a long time. You, you think a guy like that has might have a tendency to press once he gets in? And if he does, what does it look like if he's pressing? Yeah, I, I think he would. I think you'd see things like you saw on that first play. You know, wound a little tight, the ball's a little short, and uh, maybe try to do a little too much. But again, part of it, too, in my mind, is when you're told the rotation is going to be one thing and then it, it gets altered and you're not in there, you feel like maybe you're not getting an opportunity. That's his 13th play fumble. And the Pirates have it. East Carolina with the turnover. Come up with a loose ball. Mark Herndon fumbled it. Wasn't clean. Yep. Different quarterback. And his first touch, Herndon, of the yeah, ball game yeah. here. Yeah, you've got two guys who haven't been in there in quite a while. Certainly Herndon hadn't been in there at all. And that's his first carry, and that's a fumble. And you're working with a quarterback he probably hasn't had a lot of work with. Mm. Well, Harris puts that ball in a pretty good spot there. Who's that on? I think that's on the back. I mean, it looked to me like Harris put it right there for him. Does East Carolina take a shot right here after the turnover? Try and take the top off, or...? Only if it's Jones. <laughs> they come over the middle. Boy, he thread the needle that time, Rod Gilmore. Down to the 17-yard line. Catch made by Isaiah Jones for 17. Yeah, he's the threat. He is the guy that can work inside. They're picking on the linebackers, getting him in and around them. Because they can't beat the corners on the outside. Jones now up to 80 yards on 10 catches. Harrison on the handoff and drilled immediately brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 21 by Jared Davis. Well, he's been in on a bunch of plays tonight. Yeah, Davis had a big night. He stepped in after the injury much earlier to Alex Anzalone. Davis has come on and played well. Second down and 14. Hairston motions out of the backfield. A pass complete. And who else but Jones with his 11th reception tonight. That time 
for eight. So he's up to 88 yards. The meter still running. Plenty of time left for East Carolina. Yeah, good throw on time. Perfect anticipation. Expecting his guy Jones to get out there in the flat and put the ball there. You actually now have you have a field goal in your back pocket. So remember that Kemp took a sack the last time they were in scoring range. Let's see if they play it conservatively or not. On third and five. Given time, but that's going to be short of the first down. At about the 12-yard line, they complete the pass to Bryce Williams. But fourth down coming up. And, and in comes the field goal. Unit. And it's a smart move. Remember what we talked about last week. When you get a turnover, you get always points. want points off the turnover. You can't let the team that turned the ball over have a freebie. And this, if you make it, makes it a one-possession game. Still in a good spot. You don't need the touchdown first. You're okay with the field goal. And 31 yards out, and he knocks it through. Cloman. And the Pirates drawing a little bit closer when we come back. Be interesting to see who comes back out here for the Gators as they get possession after this kick. Gated by Powell. It'll come out to the 25. Taylor in the backfield. And it's Treon Harris in a quarterback. For the Gators. Harris. Oh, he dropped a dime in there at midfield. What a pass to Goolsby. Now we talked about Harris's ability to throw the deep ball. You watched him last season. You saw him do it, and you just saw a pretty pass right there. Harris was SEC all freshman player last year started six games as a freshman with 32 and three at Booker T Washington High School as a starter first down and ten Taylor on the handoff and Taylor got about two on the play because you have so many great football players in Central and South Florida and Taylor taking advantage of that is near the Southwest Ranches area about a mile and a half from uh, the Jones residence and often you'll see a lot of those NFL players working out at a lot of the local high schools Cypress Bay High School being one of them and uh, Frank Gore one of the guys that has mentored mm -hmm. Kelvin Taylor through the years. A blitz coming and Harris wisely throws it away got out of the pocket will not be grounded smart play and beyond the line of scrimmage good heat though by Zeke Bigger who might have the best name in all of college football this year Biggie Zeke Bigger <laughs> Biggie Biggie Biggie, Biggie. Biggie. <laughs> can't you see <laughs> oh he, he brought it up the middle and Harris could see him and Harris managed to elude him and get rid of it and save the down now they have a third down opportunity instead of a sack Marcus Robinson has been one of the go to guys for Florida as this game has progressed offensively. Rob. Well, McElwain said he's looking for an explosive receiver, a guy to make plays. And I think Robinson is saying, I was that guy last year. I'm your guy now. He's put to the bottom of your screen there, the single receiver. Robinson's had four catches for 44 yards tonight. Harris looks his way. And throws a dart complete to Mr. Clutch for the first down at the 34-yard line. And that's just a good, tough play by Robinson. He used his body to shield off Scarfone and keep him from getting around and making the play. Just made himself big and got the first down with it. That's a good job. 11-yard gain on the play. Look at Robinson's numbers tonight. 54 yards. Peters with a first down at the 35. Creon Harris takes the snap. Keeping his play alive. And fires it, but out of bounds. Incomplete, intended 
for Demarcus Robinson but so far Rod early in this drive uh, Harris has shown some pretty good poise bouncing back from that fumble in the previous series. Well I don't think the fumble was on him you know to be quite honest with you and I think he's certainly much warmer and prepared to be on the field now than he was when he came in that last series. I think he was almost surprised to come on the field that last series considering that they got out of the rotation and it appeared that Greer was going to go the rest of the way. Second and 15 for the Gators. Little trips right formation. Harris going to take off and do it himself. Takes out his do it yourself kit and it's pretty good. First and goal Gators from the seven. 22 yards on the run by Harris. That was a scramble, not a design run. He just decided to take off when he saw a lane. And he picks it all up here. And now Florida has a chance to put this game away. I, I really do believe they go up by two touchdowns here. That may be insurmountable. From the seven. Inside hand up and Taylor with the touchdown. An impressive drive by Florida. Choreographed by Treon Harris, who may have just given head coach McElwain something a little to think about, Rod. With that response uh, he certainly got some support and rallied his teammates and made a couple plays himself that last play that offensive line mm. just destroyed East Carolina's front a little over enthusiastic perhaps well the touchdown is the product again of what that offensive line did look at them come off and control the linebackers hunting the linebackers down and then Taylor ooh, you know discipline is what your coach has been talking about you can't have that no you can't Florida called for a personal foul his conduct by Kelvin Taylor this was the gesture he made after scoring the touchdown and uh, a vitriolic moment afterwards with his head coach. Coach McElwain talked about trying to change some of the habits and establish a certain way of doing things here. And we are thinking that that is part of the big picture. Making the tweaks he's got to make along the way. Johnson on the return brought down to the 33. East Carolina with the ball. A lot of work to do. Blake Kemp in a quarterback and a fire. Complete to Bryce Williams. Picks up about eight. And there's Taylor on the sidelines. You saw Coach McElwain light into him a moment ago. When you look at the relationship between Taylor and his father Fred who played in the NFL I can guess I'll take a good guess. He's probably more fearful of his dad's reaction right now than what he got from coach agreed That pass complete to Jones still on his feet And finally tackled inside the 30 yard line so the Pirates pick up 28 and moving very quickly Do they have enough and do they have enough time? Jones has been the one option that they've had down the field, but he's got to need a little help. To me, that's Bryce Williams, number 80. They have him split to the right side. First into the backfield. He's going to come out and catch this pass. He's brought down almost immediately, and he fumbled it. It's loose. Recovered, though, by the Pirates, his teammate Antonio Callaway, right there to pounce on the loose ball. Check that. That was Jimmy Williams. Nicely ripped loose out of Hairston. But Williams right there. Second and six. A little miscommunication between Blake Kemp and his intended receiver. 
I Grayson. Think, I think the place he needs to look is down to the bottom where he has Williams matched up against Tabor. Now Tabor has had a great game. Bryce Williams at 6'6 six, six and 260 pounds can kind of post up mm. Tabor. Just kind of throw it up there for yeah. him. Yeah, give him give him a chance. Now Tabor is in the I mean, Williams is in the slot. Underneath, pass complete to Brandon Bishop. His first catch of the ball game picks up about eight on the play. Got the first down. 5:03 to go. East Carolina with three timeouts remaining. They need to score here. They need a touchdown here. Well, they've got to protect Kemp here. When they've gotten down to this area, pressure has been their problem. Starting to drizzle down in the field there. Pass complete and then dropped. Loose. Pounced loose and uh, boy, that thing stayed loose for a long time. Yeah. And Blake Kemp, the quarterback, ended up jumping on the loose ball. Really excellent hustle by Kemp to get back involved and hang on to the football there. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks just kind of walk away from the pile. He he ran over there to get in there. Why are you putting quarterbacks on blast like that? Oh. Man? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know I'm right. <laughs> yeah, you are. Second. Second down from the 17. Kent completes it out of the backfield. And good pursuit once again by the Gators on Anthony Scott, who made the catch. Third and nine for the Pirates. Obviously, four down territory. Pass complete to Jones. Jones, his forward progress was right around that first down line. Let's see where they spot it. I thought he got the first down, and they're going to spot it right on the line. And it's going to be first and goal for the Pirates. Bryce Williams in the slot. So far, they've been running clear outs. For Jones, having the other guys run off the coverage and bringing Jones back underneath. He's the middle receiver, and that's who they go to, but the pass was behind him incomplete. And it's second and goal with 3.08 to go. East Carolina with its full complement of timeouts remaining. Florida yeah. also with three. They've had a tough time in the red zone tonight, just like they did back in the bowl game against Florida. And if they have any shot, Night of getting back in the game. They've, they've got to get in the end zone here and then decide whether to kick it off or do an onside kick. Wow. Ten play of the drive, second and goal for East Carolina. Harrison in motion into the end zone. Touchdown to Bryce Williams. So let's pump the brakes a little bit. The Pirates still very much in this ball game with 3.04 to go. That's the first touchdown catch this season for Williams and the tenth of his career six six about 260 Williams just used that size present a big target to Blake Kemp that's Touchdown. that post up you were talking yeah. about right yeah posted him up we've got a, a a good one a close one here today SEC had a great week last week mm. a few more struggles today Tennessee getting upended today by Oklahoma in Knoxville. Arkansas going down. Seven point game, folks, with 3.04 to go. Nine months ago, these two teams squared off in Birmingham at the Birmingham Bowl. It was a one touchdown game. We'll see who comes out on top when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Treon Harris on the sidelines. He led the Gators down the field the last time and scored a touchdown. But we've got a decision here, Rod. Onside kick or not, with a little over three minutes to go for East Carolina. Well, if you got three timeouts and you believe in your defense, you kick it off. If you don't think your defense can get a stop, then you can do the onside kick. I think they should kick it. I'd use my three timeouts to see if I can get the ball back. Florida with a lot of players up around that 10-yard marker. Pirates kick it off. And he'll come back out to the 25. Kelvin Taylor, despite 
that admonishing that he took publicly on the sidelines in the ball game with the ball. Brought down by Stanley, picked up three on the play, and uh, Pirates thinking about burning a time out here, maybe. I'd hold off. I'd wait until after okay. the next down to burn one of them. You got three. You keep one or two for your offense. You ought to do that. Second and seven. Harris calls the play in the huddle. Working under center for one of the few times tonight. Harris hands it off and Taylor upended and stopped in the backfield. So now, after the loss of three, we've got a very interesting third and long situation with 2.08 to go. And yeah. now the timeout called by East Carolina. Let's go downstairs to Quint for more. Rod, I agree with you. My first inclination is some kind of run fake to the short side, then have him bootleg or roll out towards the wide side of the field, towards his st strong right hand. That would make sense to me. Third and 10. Taylor takes the handoff into the boundary. And the Gators are going to have to punt here. Stopped up five yards short on the five-yard gain. East Carolina with two timeouts remaining. 2:02 remaining in the ball game. East Carolina. And they're going to take another one, so the they're down to just one. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Well, that's fine. You have one timeout, and you have two minutes left in the ball game. Florida with a couple of missed field goals today, which could be pivotal or not. With 2:02 to go. Remember, these two teams played about nine months ago in the Birmingham Bowl. It was pretty much like this, a one-touchdown game in the dying minutes here, but an important deletion here. Vernon Hargraves, the third, the guy that ended the game for Florida with the interception, is not playing tonight. Fourth and five, Townsend punts. And a fair catch called at the 30-yard line by Johnson. 40-yard punt, nothing on the return, and now... It will be Blake Kemp's turn, 70 yards away, 155 to go, going to try and get his team into the end zone. And Jones has been a really important guy here in the second half, Rock. Yeah, it, it really has been Jones and then just a little bit of Williams when needed because there's been no rushing attack tonight at all. A minus two in the second half, four for the game. So this is all on Kemp's shoulders. Can you win a game? Get, can you win a game with four yards rushing? I, I don't think so. <laughs> but they have a shot here. First and ten. Kemp. Williams. Great move. Puts his shoulder down out of bounds with a first down. Just beyond the 45-yard line. So out near midfield with a lot of time. And they're used to going quickly. Remember, they ran over 100 plays against Florida in their bowl game nine months ago. 16-yard pickup. You have a timeout. Clock is not a factor. If you are Florida, when do you think about bringing pressure again? That has been successful for you tonight. And your corners have held up on the outside. I wouldn't hesitate to bring pressure. Jones is the second receiver in for the top of your screen. And they look his way, overthrown, and almost picked off. Brian Poole was there. They brought five. They brought five, so they brought pressure, and they held up in coverage. Poole is a good matchup. He's a guy that plays the nickel spot, so he can handle the slot receiver pretty well. Played safety last week. Pretty versatile DP. Second and ten. Over the middle for Jones. Jones diving, lunging just a little bit short of that first down marker. It'll be third and short. Jared Davis made a nice tackle, swiping his arm around. Kemp's been good in the fourth quarter. Mm. Boy, those are some clutch numbers. 12 of 16. Third and short. Gets rid of it quickly. Williams makes the catch and bowls over two Gators. 
to gain about five extra yards. 111 to go, first down. Here come the Pirates. Well, if you're Florida, you know that they're throwing over the middle. They've done it with Jones, and they've done it with Williams. Someone should be spying in there. Someone should be a robber looking for them. Kemp completes it over the middle. Williams again just beyond the 25, brought down by Davis. Some interesting matchups here as the Pirates get into the red zone. 42 seconds to go. They need a touchdown for a chance to tie. Kemp incomplete. Boy, it looked like there was a little miscommunication as to who that pass was actually intended for, Rob. Yeah, I think you're right. Williams was there, Jimmy Williams and Bryce Williams. But they're they're finding that they have to look somewhere other than Jones because Florida is looking for Jones. He's, he's not been singled up in that slot. They've had him in and out covered the last couple of series. So if Jones is the guy you want, it's going to be hard to get the ball to him. He's the second receiver to the top of your screen. Inside receiver to the top of your screen up the two. Out of the backfield, Harrison. Got one man to beat and does. Gets the job done and picks up the first down. All the way to the 13-yard line. 25 seconds to go, 12-yard pickup. Is it unraveling for the Gators? Got one timeout remaining, the Pirates do. Pass incomplete. Intended for Jones. And knocked down to the ground by Brian Poole. Stops the clock with 21. Do they look gassed to you, Rod? Everyone, <laughs> everyone is gassed out there. Everyone has had it. This is hot weather, humid. You see the ECU players really gasping for air. They might need a timeout here before, mm. before too long just to catch their breath. Second and ten. Hairston in the backfield. Oh, he lost control of the ball. Florida pounces on it. Blake Kemp had the ball just slip out of his hand. An egregious, cataclysmic error in the dying moments of the game. Alex McAllister jumping on the loose ball for the Gators. Fumble or incomplete pass? No, nope, completely a fumble. That ball never came forward. He lost it on the way back. We talked about folks being tired. We talked about needing a breath. They have a timeout. And he just lost the grip on that ball. That would have been the last scenario that I would have thought would come up to end this game. Yeah. That kind of fumble. And that'll just about do us. Treon Harris, the closer tonight for the Gators. And that storyline will continue, perhaps, for one more week. For Jim McElwain and the Florida Gators. That's it from here. The Gators win it. Coming up next, Boise State taking on BYU. For Rod Gilmore and the gang, I'm Mark Jones. Now out to Provo, Utah. And Dave Lamont.